Okay, so before I move on to my next three keyframes, the, the final row showing the kind of ending consequence, I want to look over my middle. And I see I have a pretty big jump from here to here. And so what I'm going to do is just quick make a duplicate of number six and then merge them all together and move that into frame seven. So I have a sense of where I want to go. There, good. And that allows me to like backtrack on number six a little bit, especially with the fabric, because I already changed the shape. So maybe the color is a little bit too much, right? So what I'm going to do is select out kind of the color and pattern from the frame before. Paste it on top. Try some different blending modes for it. So it just doesn't seem quite as extreme. That helps. And maybe I cut away from the fabric a little bit. Remember, I made a duplicate of this before, so I can move back to it. But animation's all about kind of adjusting, going back and forth. Every time I click on those eyeballs, I'm doing a little kind of pencil test, seeing does this move enough? Does it need more? That's why it's really nice to have them in these folders. Okay, so now for seven, I want the fabric to fully merge together. And now I'm just gonna start, instead of working with shapes, I'm gonna just start uh, working directly on top of it. But just to be safe, I'll always make a copy. And then I'm gonna start using clone stamp. And just filling in a little, letting it grow. Not that big. And then I can dodge and burn. Use some of our compositing skills. Start to make this more and more like a real painting of an orc rather than just flat shapes. So you can have a lot of variety. We're going to do a lot more of this when we do digital painting. Kind of individual strokes. But I'm just getting a sense of it here. So on the eyebrows, what do I want those to look like? Change their shape a little bit and cut into them. Carry some of this skin texture. I'm just using clone stamp. Changing my target all the time. warp around. Wait, let me look at my reference and see what I want to do with that hood. Oh, and the, the horns have to start moving down. So now's a good time for those to start moving. So I can select those. My son is home for Columbus Day, so you're hearing, hearing him in the background possibly. All right, let's see. Come on. 
I'm actually going to do something a little different. I'm just going to cut out the horn. And then I'm going to say, um, cut, command X. And what that does is it gets rid of it from that layer. Let me turn on the turn off the things behind so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then it allows me to paste it onto a new layer. And I'll do the same thing with the other horn, just to put these horns on their own layer. So I can start moving them. Command X. Command V, paste on its own layer, clean up what's left behind. Okay, now I have the horns and I can start moving those down, changing them. I'm gonna do them individually. Control T. Tilt it. Shift it down. Eventually they're gonna become ears. And I'll keep them as separate layers so that I can play with them this way in the future frames as well. And then just use the clone stamp to fill in around them. underneath them. Remember that your clone stamp travels with you. So you often have to change your target before you go too far. Otherwise it starts copying stuff you don't want it to copy. I'm breaking the symmetry now, getting a little bit different expression on the eyes. Start getting rid of the forehead creases. Replace them with kind of forehead shadows. And in a way, I'm still compositing. I'm just using clone stamp. So I'm kind of like we did for our clouds, like we did for finishing off our creature. I'm just doing kind of targeted internal compositing. But I could also just pick a color and just start painting with it right over the top. OK, so the difference between 6 and 7 from that this we're getting somewhere now let's work with the teeth a little bit maybe bring some yellow into them and start changing the shape of that mouth Changing the shape of the nose just by kind of cutting away from it. Okay. 
And then I can even use a lower opacity clone stamp to add some subtlety. But transformation. Add some shadows under the eyes. Oh, very. Add some redness. And if at any time I think I've gone too far, remember I did a duplicate. So I can always just steal it from the layer underneath and get back to the beginning. Like I've kind of lost the nose. So I can just go to the layer underneath, steal this nose back, or a portion of it, duplicate that, move it above, integrate it into what I have. Right. Maybe even change its shape a little bit. If I want to reassert hard edges, I can cut away, show what's underneath. I can take this mouth from the layer below. Much like I did with the nose, I can internally composite it, duplicate it, put it on top, and then Control T, not Command T, change its shape, can warp it. So I can get a little bit closer. to what I want in the final frames. Okay, let's see. A little more clone snapping, and then I think I'm done with this frame. So whenever you're doing kind of just direct pixel changing, especially when you're doing it kind of lower opacities and with more subtlety, you can see that it can take a while. So that's why I'm reserving these kind of changes for my final frames. But what's nice about it all being rasterized, all being directly editable, I'm just creating my own pixels, is I can dodge and burn them. I can merge them all together. So for instance, I'll make a duplicate of seven now. Merge that together. And then I can just dodge and burn it. 